up. <laughs> I would like to know. Yes. <laughs> um, what was your favorite costume to wear and why? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I have to say, I really loved the red suit with the skirt mm. that kind of flowed out <laughs> when I danced with 30 lamplighters. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and I remember Rob Marshall really wanted like a Ginger Rogers type of look to that, you know, and it, it's not actually accurate for the time period. Um, to have a skirt that opened up like that. So that's where Sandy Powell, the great Sandy Powell, mm -hmm. created all those kind of very tight pleats so that it looked very chic and sort of um, and straight lined. And then when I turned, the whole skirt kind of opened up. And it was just so, oh, she's just so exciting to work with Sandy Powell. I mean, all the costumes are so extraordinary, but um, I think the red suit was pretty epic. Was that also your favorite um, scene of the film, or did you have a different one that you? Um, God, there were so many that I loved. I mean, I love the poignancy of the ballad that I sing to the kids because it's sort of her revealing her most tender <laughs> side. Because she's such a weird, eccentric <laughs> lady, and she's stern and yet sort of, you know, shows great humanity and shows great depth because she comes into their lives to heal and to bring order to chaos and. Re reintroduce the idea of magic and so but she doesn't let you know that you know so it's sort of exciting to play someone who's in command of the environment and yet pretends kind of not to be and expects nothing in return so I would say that scene with the kids was really moving and then I loved that big um, the cover is not the book number but the it was like wild you know yes. that was really fun what was the moment where you were like, either was it table read when you were reading the script originally or when you were fully dressed when you were like, holy smokes. I would say the arrival scene where I am dangling 60 feet from a crane <laughs> and Rob Marshall played the amazing orchestral music from the speakers, like blared it from the speakers so that it was very transporting and really exciting, but I was kind of terrified of that. I thought I was all right with heights, and then I was up there, and I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember hanging up there and looking down, and Lin-Manuel Miranda was like, that big. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that was the moment because I had the coat, the hat, the umbrella, the feet, mm -hmm. the kite, you know, and, and that was when... I, I, it was one of the only moments I allowed myself because I kind of had to block out the fear of how iconic she was and taking mm. this on for most of the shoot. But that was the moment I allowed myself that moment of like, for, I know, <laughs> yeah. 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 it was really <laughs> insane. It was, it was like I was hit between the eyeballs with it. Um, and then I remember I landed and we did the scene and one of the crew guys, this is when you know it's like a cool scene. It's like, He's like the focus puller, and he came up to me and goes, I've got to say, I got really emotional watching that. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like she's back. You know, yeah. we've waited 54 years, and people have told me that. People who, some of the most cynical people I know were like, <laughs> I cried when she came back, and I didn't realize how much I wanted her to come back until I saw her, saw your feet coming out of the ground. <laughs> 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 so cool. How has what playing you, Mary Poppins um, influenced your own motherhood? And I mean, I feel my whole household is full of imagination and childlike wonder because my kids are so young, and so I do feel like I've sort of rediscovered life through their eyes, really. Um, I mean, Hazel's a bit disappointed that there aren't dolphins in her body. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, in a way, Mary Poppins has kind of shot me in the foot. Like, I'm, I know I'm only going to be less than. You know, like, for everyone else, like all of their friends are gonna be like, "Your mom's Mary Poppins, that's so cool." And my own kids will be like, "You should see it. It's not." <laughs> They're gonna be like, "She is so not Mary Poppins." <laughs> yeah. What was the biggest challenge actually? Um, I mean, the dancing was a bit daunting because I'd never done those sort of big show-stopping Hollywood numbers, you know, and the great Rob Marshall and is an incredible choreographer as well as an incredible director. 
So we were in safe hands. I feel like Lynn Manuel and I were sort of on a par with dancing abilities. So we were in it together. Thank God. If I'd been dancing with like Justin Timberlake, that <laughs> would have been really embarrassing. But, um, I would say that. But then on a sort of deeper note, I think the initial um, idea of taking her on because she is so iconic and Julie Andrews is so iconic and the character has this searing imprint on people's lives. It's often the first movie that anyone ever saw. Mm. And so it was that I needed to get over myself, I think, and sort of approach her as I would any other role um, and allow everyone's sort of gasping reaction when I said I was going to take on Mary Poppins. Everyone was like, oh my God. You know, like, there's just so much energy coming at you that you have to allow that to be white noise and just approach her as I would any other character. So I think it was the initial overcoming of that. And then I just completely fell in love with her. I was just so mad about her by the end. I just loved it. Loved it. Do you still think she's stuck up? Stuck up. Oh, she's really stuck up. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that? Well, I think she's she's much much closer to how she is in the books. That's how I played her. And in the books, she's she's incredibly rude and vain and funny and enigmatic and weird. You know, she's sort of bizarre and and layered. And so for me, it was sort of you know, how do I find those cracks of humanity in a superhuman? And where are they? And, and I said to Rob Marshall, I said, you know, the sternness, I really want all the sternness and the sort of imperious quality to her, like, to drop when she goes into these fantasias. I said, she's, she should be like an adrenaline junkie. So <laughs> that duality of the character. You know, that when she goes into these adventures, you've got to see her childlike wonder and her thrill and enjoyment of it. And then when it's over, she pretends none of it happened and she had nothing to do with it. So it's like so yeah. cool playing someone with that duality to them. Last question right here with Jan. Um, what's it like working with Dick Van Dyke? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it was so overwhelming, I have to say, because he's so sprightly and cool and just what a gorgeous human. And he walked on set and he just said, I feel the same spirit here that was there on the first mm -hmm. movie. And of course, we all wanted to cry. And he'd, we'd all sit around him and just want him to tell us stories about the original. And and sang Jolly Holiday to me. And I was just like, I, say, I can die now, that's it. I can die. <laughs> you know, it just lights out, awesome moment. And I, I think probably actually my other moment of, oh my God, I'm playing Mary Poppins, was in the scene with him where he has that beautiful monologue that was so gorgeous to Michael Banks, and we're all crowded around him. And the music starts, and he finishes the monologue, and in this scene, he crosses his arms, and he looks up at me like that. <laughs> and I just remember looking at those iconic blue eyes, and I was like, wow, you know, that was just so wild.